Due to the rise of narcissism, we have decided to re-upload the sociopath to hell. What if I told you one of Satan's biggest plans from the day you were born through cartoons, TV, music, and now with social media was to take your brain and fill it with the mind of Lucifer. But what is the mind of Lucifer? How does he think and operate? You don't want to miss this message. This message was preached over three and a half years ago. Please be patient with the audio. We didn't have the best camera at the time. I need you to be mature, have a pen and a pad and your word and focus and make sure you do the prayer at the end even if you think you're not infected with the mind of Lucifer. Help spread this message and we love y'all so much. In Jesus Christ's name, bless. Today's Bible sermon real series for real. And um, the name of it is called The Sociopath to Hell. The Sociopath to Hell. Subtitle, The Mind of Lucifer. In Jesus' name, Lord, as we've already prayed, Lord, that your word will go forth with power. That the Holy Ghost will be the preacher. I'm just a vessel. Jesus gets all the glory. Amen? Amen. Literally. You know, some pastors that say that because they know they're supposed to say that. You know what I'm saying? But they still want the glory. Here it goes. If there be, therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or what vain glory. What does that mean? But in lowliness of mind, let each other esteem others better than themselves. Do you hear that nowadays? But every man also on the things of others. Somebody read verse 5 for me. And Jesus said, let this mind be in, be, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You heard that. Say that one more time. Sister. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the mind that was in Christ has to be in who? In you. In us. That's right. Wow. So I got it straight from the, I got the actual definitions. Because I don't want to know. I want to show y'all something. All right, first one. What is the definition of a narcissist? Y'all ready? A person <laughs> who has an excessive interest in or admiration of themselves. What is the definition of a sociopath? A person with a personality disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behaviors and a lack of consciousness. Conscience, right? So, I told y'all the name of the sermon is called The Sociopath to Hell. The subtitle is The Mind of Lucifer. Okay? What age brackets do we have here? So we got anything from those that were born in the 80s and the 90s, right? And even the 70s, right? So I want you to see the tactic of the devil, right? What if I told you that how many of y'all was put in front of the TV to watch cartoons a lot as a child? I think everybody on YouTube would raise their hand too. No. Y'all know you don't lie. You know you was at cartoons too, YouTube. Amen. So, what if I told you that the same way in the physical realm, a farmer, right, or a a gardener, whatever, will have a bag of seeds. This is good. Please catch this. Lord, keep our minds focused. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. 
He has a bag of seeds and he plants the seeds into the ground knowing that in the, fu in the future something will break through and become growth. It, it will become alive. It will be a plant no matter what it is. It could be a tomato plant. You understand? Right? It's the same way the devil could plant the seed in a child at the age of eight but the harvest ain't till 18. <laughs> y'all, did y'all hear what I just said? Oh, yeah. So he could, plead a, he could plant the seed in cartoons and video games and movies and music as you're growing up and the seeds are chilling, waiting for certain seasons to germinate and to grow into your mind, huh? Mm -hmm. To wrap around your soul and actually give you a personality that you really never had in the first place. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So, I want everybody to see this because I never hear people talking about this. Do you know that pets like dogs and things like that, mm -hmm. they don't listen to your words, they listen to your character and your actions. You think they know what you're talking about, and maybe some do. They'll eventually learn the words, but they study your what? Yeah, your character, yeah. your personality. They know based upon they watch you a certain way. What if I told you children study the characters in the cartoon shows? You're thinking, oh, it's just funny, you know what I mean? But what if I told you that the Illuminati, the beast system, if you ever, like now that I tell you about it, you're going to bug out. Because you start to remember what are the characters of people in these shows. How many of y'all grew up on The Simpsons? That was my show. That was man. my show. I used to go to sleep to it. You yeah, to, well, yo, was, dinner. TV dinners. Just yeah, that was my show. <laughs> watching Itchy and Scratchy. Yes. Just chilling. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now they got Family Guy. Yeah. South Park. Right? The show. When you see all the shows that we grew up with. What are the characters of the of the 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 um the characters of the characters? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. it does. No, no. What is the characteristics of, of the, the characters character. on every show you watch growing up? What are the characteristics of the musicians you were raised up to listen to? How many y'all was in the TLC era? Oh yeah. Salt and Pepper. Yeah, totally. Tupac, Biggie. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> And it goes on and on and on. Well, what if I told you that as you opened yourself up, because like G. Craig Lewis said, the word entertain means what? To enter. Detain for entry. That's right. So you were detained to be entered into. Right? But what seeds were planted in us at that age? What were the characters in these cartoons? Um, Walt Disney is a 33rd degree Freemason. Or was? Is he still alive? He passed, right? He was a 33rd degree Freemason. He made it where the, the number 666 was in his name. So, I was, I was thinking about this and I said, wow. What would be the biggest thing that the devil would want to plant into the minds of the people? And that's when it hit me. He would want his mind to people. develop in, people. in the people. Wow. You see how we read the scripture, have the same mind that was in Christ? <laughs> so the Antichrist, Satan, is coming through music, media, TV shows, cartoons, to develop the mind of Lucifer in the, in the people. So a lot of thoughts you have. Some of y'all burn with lust and you don't comprehend why. But you don't know how many subliminal messages in the Walt Disney movies you watched. Have you ever heard, have you ever looked up that stuff? Yeah. The subliminal messages in cartoons and all? Like The Lion King was a wicked movie. And that was like the illest movie to me. In the jungle. You know what I'm saying? Akuna Matata. You know what I'm saying? Chilling. I mean, and it became ritualistic. You noticed too when you was a kid? You know, a lot of us struggle. So whatever DVDs or movies mom had, that's what you watched every day. Right. Ain't that right? No. So therefore, not only did it affect you the first time, 
But it what? It subdued you. It was like, yeah. this is your personality, sister. You're going to think like this. You're going to be selfish. Mm -hmm. And you're going to want everything from everybody. This is your personality, brother. You're going to hate women. And you're going to do everything in your possible power to what? To be for you. So today what I want us to do is I want us to study the mind of Lucifer and then counterattack it with the mind of Christ. And let's see how many people are really infected with the sociopathic spirit and the narcissistic spirit. Because, <laughs> Lord Jesus. So here we got Jay-Z. See a shirt says, do what thou will. You see that on the shirt? Mm -hmm. Do what thou will. The one who came up with that was Alistair Crowley, who called himself the beast. He said, do what thou will shall be the whole of the Lord. I mean, do everything you want to do. It's about you. It's not about uh, uh, who cares about anyone else. Do whatever pleases you. And notice how in hip-hop they try to smooth it in. I'm just doing my thing. I'm just doing my thing. That same language. Just yeah. spun a little differently, yeah. right? All of them, the, the god of hip-hop, which is another sermon coming, is the Baphomet, the Baphomet, okay, which is the goat, the false goat god, mm -hmm. Satan. We ain't gonna talk about that today. Because I don't even like bringing this stuff up, but you have to know about it. Don't be afraid of it, okay? Mm -hmm. I know this ain't your normal. Come in, drop a 20, sing a couple hymns, Hear a sermon that made no sense and did nothing to you and then go home in a mess. But guess what? There's a real churches out here. And they're scattered. And we're not playing games no more. The Beatles. Your mothers and fathers that grew up on Beatles and Led Zeppelin. I'm not going to get too deep in it because most of y'all know already. You know when you play that song Stairway to Heaven Backwards? Yeah, it's a, it's a message on it. Woo! It's like a whole... Three paragraphs. Just hell saying you will go to hell and burn and be a receiving the mark of the peace. Like it's crazy. Fire burns Satan Amen. in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. All hell Jesus Christ. Yes, hell Jesus Christ. Huh? Yes. Amen. But what is this? What is this? These seeds that were planted. Because the devil knew he was not concerned with the planting, he was concerned. With the reaping, the harvest. Can't you see it's a battle of harvest? Jesus said the laborers are what? Few. Plenty. I'm sorry, the harvest is plenty, but the what? The laborers are few. There's the wheat and there's the. So we were planted as wheat, right? Every time you read the word, you're putting seed in you. See, this guy's got wheat. Every time you listen to praise music, will you think it's song when you sing a song like, oh, my God is an awesome God, he reigns for heaven above with wits, the power and love of God is an awesome God. Now you thought you was just singing that until something happened in your life and that seed rose up. You said, oh, my God is awesome. Amen. I don't let this move me not one inch. Where did that seed come from? You planted it. You reaped. <laughs> you planted it. You reaped it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna get too much into all of that. That's for your own research. If you're reading and praying the way you're supposed to, you can know that what is what is the personality of most of the musicians now? Whether they rappers, uh, singers, pop stars, they're sociopaths. Yes. They're narcissists. It's all about them. Just I got what you don't hold. Drop to the ground and make it flow. You a narcissist. It's all about you. You have no emotion. You have no concern for women. You have no concern for mothers. You have no concern for fathers. You do not care about kids. There's mothers that are killing their children just to be with their new boyfriend that don't want children. There's fathers that will not spend a dime on their sons but got new Jordans. Uh. But where did these seeds come from? Because it's not natural for you to beat your kids that way. Amen. It's not natural for you to not feel like that. When God told me to do that song numb, I knew that song would be a delivering song. 
Because, yo, the, the society is sociopathic. It is narcissistic. It's the mind of Lucifer. Because what we're going to do, we're going to go into the scriptures, and I'm going to show you the mind of Lucifer and see if it makes sense to you. Huh? Amen. Amen. Paul said, we are not ignorant <coughs> of the devil's devices. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Watch this. There's so many, but mm, I, we can't really do it like that. Like, I'll show you just another picture real quick. You see how she's imitating his head? The same thing? Mm -hmm. She said, do what you want. That's Lady well, that's, Gaga's. That's Alistair Crowley. Yeah, Alistair same, Crowley. that's who they follow. Yeah. The god yeah. of hip-hop is the Baphomet. Alistair Crowley mm -hmm. was the, was the, like the John the Baptist for the Baphomet, you could say. You know what I mean? Never the John the Baptist, but as no, far yeah. as like a, a Muhammad to Allah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, just an idea. They're all like that. You see all the rappers throwing up devil horns. And you'll see them all submit. And we're we going to tap into some of that on, um, on a round two with this. But let me, let me show y'all something. Did you know it's not just the amount of TV time that should concern parents these days, content counts too. Alicia Smith shares what researchers found out. A new study finds what kids watch on TV can have a positive effect on their behavior. If it has a Dr. positive, it can have a what? Negative. In the study, but as a pediatrician at Cleveland Clinic, violence on TV is much different than the violence that we were watching when we were watching TV when we were younger. And so there's a lot more of it. And the problem is that kids imitate what's on TV. See that? So not only are they imitating it, but when they watch it a great deal, that becomes their reality. Whoa. So all of a Hold sudden, on. their Pause. world is a world that's much more it becomes their reality i try to tell parents my wife has told parents some of these parents they just put their eight-year-old daughter to watch disney team and walk away having no clue how wicked them shows are mm. and you notice the fathers on the shows are always sodomites or really effeminized and castrated <laughs> the mothers are always dominating and condescending on the man and the children always rule over the parents. Notice that? I'll tell you what happened to me. This is when I was backsliding. Like three years in a row. I'm not ashamed of my backslid. Amen. I hate that I did it. But I'm not ashamed to tell y'all I did it. Or none of, nobody online. Because what it did is it made me a stronger person. Amen. It made me hate evil more. I had to go do that. Like when Peter denied Christ. I didn't deny him. But if I'm sinning, I'm not accepting him. Amen. You understand? But I remember I, I smoked some weed. Thank God I got set free from that years ago. Amen. 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 That'll silence any liars. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because they're lying. Well, he still smoked weed and he does. I mean, it's the ghetto gospel. Listen, it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The ghetto gospel is the name of the ministry because we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ghetto. To the ghetto. Amen. Now, we preach to all men. You can be from the suburbs. We'll come see you. But our assignment is what Jesus said when he opened up the Isaiah. He said, the Lord has sent me to preach the word to what? To the, to the broken, broken, to the poor. The poor. Mm -hmm. Where was Jesus all the time? <laughs> Prostitutes, drunks, Drunk, so people begging for money. He sinners. was in the hood. He was at the sinners. No, we're not. We're not saying we're only preaching to street people. But they'll hate because we do things not their way. But who said their way is the right way? Amen. I don't feel the presence of God when I visit a lot of them places. Now, there's real men of God out here. Amen. They're around. Trust me. They're all over the country and all over the world. They're just small in between so you don't recognize them. But we're not the only <laughs> real ministry. The Holy Spirit makes us free. We just strive to walk in holiness. Amen. But when I was bound by weed, and y'all need to be loosened, anyone that's still bound by weed. Because we'll, we got a sermon coming up down the road. I'm going to show you the origin of marijuana. Mm. I'm going to show you the spirit behind it. It's a very prideful spirit. It loves to be known. So... I was smoked, I smoked, right? And I was it was sitting on, on my sister's couch. Of course, weed will bring you into poverty. You know what I mean? This is um right before I met my wife. 
And um, I was, man, I had nowhere to stay, you know what I mean, struggling. Because any tent I got went to a, a dime, you know what I'm saying? Went to a blunt. And I go to a job interview, smelling like a blunt. I'm like, why didn't I get the job? <laughs> You feel stupid when you realize what you're doing. Like, I went there. I'm smart he was like, well, we'll call him. Like, you got a, you got a like break room. You got some food up in here. I got the munchies. <laughs> Billy, I got the munchies. We'll, we'll call you. Don't you call us. You know what I'm saying? Thing. Right? But check out what happened to me. So I was chilling on the couch and I'm watching a show. And I freaked out. Even though I was blooded, I was still allowed to see something in the spirit realm. Okay? It was a show and it was like funny things going on. And the laughter in the background sounded creepy to me. Cause all you ever wonder, like with these shows, yeah. how can you never laugh? Yeah. I'm not saying like some parts be funny when you was in the world. Yeah, but but it's too much, like you can't get a crowd that like <laughs> 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 Yo, if you really listen to it, it's a button they push yeah, in the studio. Yeah, they do. It's not. It's artificial laughter, yeah. but it's meant to what? Program, to, program to laugh mm -hmm. at evil and to laugh and to go against good. You understand? Mm -hmm. And that's when I bugged out. I was like, Yo, this is crazy, right? So I realized that. It, this stuff really has an effect on us, right? Way more than we think it does. Now you heard what she just said. Mm -hmm. This becomes a child's reality. Mm -hmm. it, yo, as wicked as the music was in our day, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as evil as they were, they still weren't Christ-like. They still were going to hell. But at least a sister got a song like, What I need from you is understand. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to regenerate it. I'm right. rebuking in Jesus' name. Some of y'all started swearing like, so simple as what? I'm mad in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But what I'm saying to you is, it's not even that. No. I'll sit on a brother's face and run up down the A and at the, at the, at the at. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're men now. They're, they're more grimy than the dude rappers. It's reversed. The women are masculine and manly, man, uh, manly, and the men are girly and effeminized. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me I'm not. Uh, listen, I know what I'm saying is right. Because I'm being led by Jesus. Okay? All these rappers. And notice they all got Lil before their name or Kid. Or, you see the way or, they dress too, they wear like Young, this. youngster, black youngster. Lil Uzi, Lil Urkel, Lil Chris, Lil Wayne, Baby Boy. Mm. Bro, you like 55. Stop <laughs> with the baby stuff. Bro. <laughs> you take a flight all the way to Hot 97 and respect, respect my name, man. You gonna respect my name, but bro, you, you what? It, it hurts you that bad? It's a way to bring you captive into what? Arrested development, immaturity. What what would we brainwash to call our houses? Crib. Crib. Yeah. A crib. <laughs> well, you See, you ain't used to it. Yeah, no, you right? ain't used to it. Uh, really true. Bro. I'm at my crib. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You, you in the crib? What was the next thing in line? You still breastfeeding. It's just, Ma, you want to imagine what they did? The coach didn't let me play. He didn't let me play, Ma. <laughs> you still breastfeeding at 19 years old. This is insanity. But because we're in the last days, insanity is considered saying that. Evil is considered good. This is why when I uploaded that video about the ex-pastor, brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Yeah! And he threw the cross. See, you're not catching the subliminals. I'm gonna, I've gone too far. We got somewhere else to go with this. I don't want to get caught up in telling you all that they do. We got to go to the scripture with this. Researchers at the Seattle Children's Research Institute studied the effect of screen time and programming on nearly 600 families. Programming! Kids in the 3 to 5 age range who were encouraged... I'm going to break down two words for you. Tell me what it means. Tell a vision. Tell your vision. TV programming. To program you. Yeah. Thank you. To view less violent TV shows and watch with mom and dad, ended up spending less time on violent programming up to a year later. They were also significantly less aggressive, exhibited more pro-social behavior, and watched more educational See how TV is? Yes, it's really important. Because children don't study the way you watch TV. You know oh, he's a clown. They're not looking at hit that man as a clown. Yeah. They're like, now, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, who do I want to be like? Yeah. Who do I want to act like? You know, Caillou, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm almost positive. Caillou is the voice of a girl. Yeah, yeah you know, uh, well, I don't mean to bring this up. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a ghetto. Like, you ever heard of the boondocks? Yeah, yeah. That, that, they, they try to use the boondocks to actually speak on like things that's going on in this community and yeah. society. But the boys are a voice of a girl, too. Now, why would they take the voice of a woman and put it for the character of boys? What do you think that does to your psychological mind? Make a boy become gay when he get older. Thank you. But see, you don't catch it. Now, we, we y'all get the drip with this one. We got a couple to get into before we, we crack open the Hallelujah, the good book. They got boys All thinking right? that they, they were born like that. That's right. Now, um, here's one. I'm going to breeze through it. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 sexual innuendos in animated kids series. Ow! Please don't pull my hair, Arnold. Huh? I didn't pull your hair. Arnold, I know that you like me like me, but please, don't do it again. For this list, we're taking a look at adult references that got by the censors in cartoons and animated TV series that are primarily targeted towards kids. And that's how I fell in love with pie. <laughs> Number 10, Farrah Fawcett blindfolded, Johnny Bravo. Oh, Farrah, I love the way you make me smile. Johnny Bravo has one thing constantly on his mind, getting with the ladies. In this episode, he sets his eyes on actress Farrah Fawcett. Oh, how sweet. That smarmy is so nice. I'm going to have to give him a big kiss. With the real Farrah Fawcett lending her own voice, she plays a game of pin the tail on the donkey at a birthday party. At first, Farrah can't remember the last time she was blindfolded, but then she has a rather revealing recollection. I can't remember the last time I was blindfolded. Oh, wait. Yes, I can. You <laughs> see that? Now, there's mad, um, you know, scenarios. Remember Roger Rabbit? Yeah. Yes. Bro, I was like five, like, yeah, just checking that. out that chick, like, eh. Yeah. And I didn't even know, but there was something in me. It was like a demon was teaching the children. Sure. This, this, you're supposed to lust over her. Because mm -hmm. of time, I don't want to go through all of them. That I know you guys kids, would like to see more when, examples. When guys grow they wanted a girl with the nice body and stuff. You yeah. Know you, you don't go for, guys don't go for girls now for their personality or how they look. They go for nah. the, how they look. Or. But now you know why though. It's the seeds that been planted. Sure. F those hoes that you've been hearing for 15, 20 years in music. Right. What you think that did to them, man? What you think that did to them? Yeah, they want to be around. They, they planted nothing but seeds of hatred of women. And a man that has hatred of women is actually going to inherit a homosexual spirit. Now, the universe has been hailed for its sophistication. Man, there's so many different. Well, look at that guy. Look, look at how look at how it's happening. Blossom Watch this. meet the Powerpuff Girls in a laboratory. But all the other parents of Townsville. See how effeminized the father is on the show. Yeah, there you go. He created. Watch, watch out! Watch out! Watch out! He moves in the old-fashioned way. 
That doesn't mean every conception was planned, though. This is our house. I'm going upstairs. This is our house. As the girls introduce their new neighbor to their father, Robin notes that her birth was every bit as accidental as Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercups. Yeah, he made us in his laboratory by accident. Well, what can I say? Now, yes and no, if you notice, most men in news reports, um, characters on shows are effeminized or homosexual now. Because mm -hmm. did you know that in the book of Daniel, chapter, yeah. I think 811 or 1137, one of those, it says that the Antichrist will not desire a woman. Mm. The Antichrist is a homosexual. So if he's going to raise up an army, what will his followers be? Homosexual. They will be L G T B Z Y P. What they they D? I think they add a letter every two months, right? right? But it, it keeps going on and on. Got to tier on. fifty, dude. I got no idea what you're talking about. Right? I don't want to get into that. But and then so there's lust being permeated, right? Now look at this one. Animals that much really be as we all read, go cats. And can anyone who loves animals that much really be crazy? See how crazy it is? You remember these episodes? Really do. Right. But this one is That's about crazy. psychopaths. You know what I'm saying? And if you notice every show, they it's kind of like Hagen dies. You know what I mean? You can choose who you want to be when you get old. Right. And whatever Tess, state you're in. Sideshow Bob, The Simpsons. Bart, if I wanted to kill you, I'd have choked you like a chicken as soon as I walked in that door. <gasps> now watch this. Now, now some some parents watching that with, with their kids would laugh, but the kid was like, I like his character. Right. And he like, you know, the cat went missing. the sociopath killing people. You know what I'm saying? The cat went missing like, next month, like, found it, like, stabbed up in the backyard right. for real. Very true. I'm being real. When you think about it, it really does make sense because a lot of kids, like, when you're growing up, you see these people, like, how could you grow up to want to just kill, first you're killing animals, then you're going to killing people, like, with no... No feeling. No feeling. You ready? The sociopath to hell. We're going to get into it. Now, that's, here we go. Now, this crazy. is a big one. We got to play through the end. Hi, right, well, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Nets. And in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 ways to detect sociopaths. Number 10, surface charm and glibness. Some people seem to have more charm than others. Pronounced charm is a red flag which indicates sociopathy. That's sociopaths really do not feel the same love, empathy, and remorse that neurotypical people do. This isn't pop psychology. MRIs show that sociopaths process life differently. Since sociopaths become consciousless due to a blend of childhood trauma and genetics, they realize fairly early on that they don't feel things as a- Pause, you heard what it said, childlike trauma? Mm -hmm. Why do you think so many of us were invaded in our homes with alcoholism? violence, mm. abuse. Mm. It was to it was to prepare your brain for the mind of Lucifer. To make your wow. sociopath Come know. on. Yo, after this word is a healing prayer. Y'all y'all excited for the healing hey, prayer? Yes. So charm. It's not that you can't have a sense of humor. These are people that Over charming that is overly done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's it's um deceitful. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? A fake charm. Yeah. Others do. They know they are different. In order to cloak their strangeness and in order to get what they want from others, they learn how to act in order to pass in society. As they mimic neurotypical people, they become adept at charming them. Their charm is centered on mirroring those that they meet. In other words, they gather facts about others and use those facts in order to appear to have the same interests and the same values as them. Also, sociopaths are known to have higher levels of testosterone and an excess of this hormone tends to make them more sexually attractive to other people. The downside of this is that sociopaths are often hypersexual, which does not promote fidelity. Naturally, sociopaths don't feel guilty when they cheat. Glibness is also another dead giveaway. If you know someone who uses jokes, puns, and deflections in order to avoid serious discussions about real problems, beware. This is not unintentional, and it's a sign that the sociopath wants to move the conversation away from difficult issues. In particular, if you find that a partner, colleague, or friend avoids answering direct questions or hesitates before answering any types of questions, you should definitely be wary. 
a celebrity example. Ted Bundy's modus operandi was to win the sympathy of his intended victims by playing the victim himself. Sociopaths know that playing the victim is a very effective way to achieve their goal. So, my wife and I, we had to approach a sister, right? And when we approached her, immediately she went into tears about her own sin. Like, I can't believe it! Why was that? I thought Sociopathic personality. Because what you're doing is you are... You are trying to manipulate us with your emotions to, feel like to, be the to stop hammering down on the truth of who you really are. Yeah. It's a sociopathic tactic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? That's why y'all, especially your sisters, don't be moved by emotions. Mm -hmm. Care for people in a godly way, but some tears ain't supposed to be embraced, it's supposed to be ignored. That makes sense? How could you come at me? Just because I wanted to sleep with your husband and just because I smoke crack, don't be. No. Repent. Amen. Because under that, uh, the, repent. The of that face, they probably laughing at it. Yeah. Repent. You know, actors and actresses are professional fakers. Yes. They, they practice the cry. Cry on a drop. Oh, yes. Just, you know. Like when Denzel do a show, they call, you know, I mean, these actors are brilliant at what mm -hmm. they do. You think they're only in Hollywood? Mm -hmm. yeah, they right. Come on. Too. Watch this. Known for his traditionally masculine values, Bundy was very well spoken and able to trick women by appearing to be injured. He wore a fake cast, donned crutches, and then posed as a victim. He would approach women and ask them to help him move things over to his VW bug. The infamous VW bug was modified in order to assist him with rape and murder. He removed the passenger seat with a mind to making it simpler to carry cargo. However, his victims usually didn't see the missing passenger seat until it was too late. With sociopaths, the evil works often just out of sight, so it's important to consider the fact that anyone who you may meet may be consciousless. Number 9. Egoism and Grandiosity Sociopaths have swollen egos. Their lack of emotional depth and incapacity for love are characteristics which they often view as secret weapons in the wars they wage against those they want to manipulate and or ruin. This edge that they feel they have over non-sociopaths, neurotypicals, feeds their sense of superiority. Therefore, the second primary indicator of sociopathy is egoism or grandiosity. Signs of an ego which has narcissistic features, sociopaths are also narcissistic, include bragging about their looks, vanity, bragging about possible encounters with celebrities or other VIPs, and bragging about sexual performance and or exploits. In terms of spotting grandiosity, look for a sense of disdain for others. For example, a sociopath may make racist statements regularly. As well, he or she may relate to individuals or creatures which are notorious for doing significant damage to humanity or God, such as war criminals, gangsters, or the devil. Many sociopaths may also give you clues to who they really are, even if they frame it as a joke. For example, someone who calls himself evil or bad is actually bragging about what's inside. He or she wants this darkness recognized. Celebrity example, Herbert. See that? I met a sociopath when I think about it. He had the same characteristics. Like he was. Watch. Why, wait till we break down the list though. Because I know. Um, so, egoism and grandiosity, right? These are people where it's all about them. They don't care about you. Mm -hmm. It's their way or the highway. Mm. Now, hold on, pause. Because some of y'all are married, okay? This is not immediately. I, <laughs> Some people on YouTube or whatever just like, that's my man, that's my husband all day. That's, that's my wife. Or, you know, that's my mama. What I tell people is, sociopaths also don't check themselves first. They'll always look everywhere else except themselves. And I'm telling you right now, a person might not be a complete sociopath, but you can be infected with the seed. It can be growing in you. With certain characteristics of them. So today we have to command it to leave in Jesus' name. Amen. Because Amen. a sociopath is to hell. Ah. The mind of Lucifer is narcissistic by nature. Narcissists and sociopaths are one and the same. Yes. They unite. Goering. The late Nazi figure Ed Herman Goering is commonly perceived as a sociopath. For good reason. Most sociopaths. Manipulation. I'm just fast forwarding the examples. Deception of occupying a higher layer being attacked and denounce the peacemakers for lack of find it with a sociopath. What you won't find is love, respect, and respect in any country. Number eight. 
High sensation seeker. If you want a little excitement, you'll find it with a sociopath. What you won't find is love, respect, and reciprocity. Sociopaths live in a state of constant boredom as their inner lives are practically non-existent. Since any emotions that they do experience, such as lust, anger, irritation, envy, and fleeting happiness are usually quite weak, they flicker into their consciousness and then dissipate as quickly as they come. For this reason, they find that boredom is their biggest challenge in life. Anger is usually the most powerful emotion that a sociopath feels. He or she may even like to be angry, as it's better to feel something than to feel so little. If someone in your life seems to create drama and chaos on purpose at frequent intervals, he or she may be a sociopath who is trying to access sensation via arguments. Sensation seeking may happen in a variety of ways, from juggling multiple romantic relationships to reckless driving, speeding, drug driving, etc., to drug abuse and alcoholism. The truth is that many sociopaths abuse drugs and booze on a regular basis. Sociopaths may also seek out deviant adventures in riskier locales such as the Third World. Since they find any fear that they do experience to be pleasurable, they enjoy putting themselves at risk. Without risk, they experience a sense of emptiness which is depressing and unpleasant. A celebrity example, Charles Manson turned to petty crime. Also lying. With men in all. Pause. So, a lot of things are boring to them, right? Mm -hmm. Right? If you notice in this generation, if a child don't have, like, you know, if you try to do something normal, what do they say? This is boring. boring. Mm -hmm. I want to go home and play video games. Mm -hmm. Can I get an iPad? No, look outside and check out the trees, man. See how beautiful the leaves are? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm being real. No, seriously. This is the brick. Watch this. But notice, the, notice he said that anger is their greatest emotion. I'll tell you a couple of examples. We had a neighbor above us, this older lady. She was, a, she was like, for real, like 65. You know what I mean? And she had literally like 17 to 22 cats in her house. And we lived underneath her in this condo. And the smell began to, it began to seep through the walls. And that ammonia smell, I was like, yo, listen. You know, and she, she would go to church on Sunday. But when she came out, it smelled like 30 cat litter boxes, like all wrapped around her when she would walk by. And I noticed that she had a way of manipulation about her to get what she wanted. You know what I mean? Like, it'll always be like when we were about to leave, she'd be coming walking down because she knows I'm not going to be like, Mrs. So-and-so, where you, where you, you know, because she will walk to the bus stop. So she would deliberately come out when we're leaving. And I'm like, well, we kind of in a rush. We've got a meeting to get to, but uh, all right, I'll, I'll drop you to where you got to go. And it became a using thing, right? When I approached her on the cast, okay, all of a sudden, she became very angry with me. I was like, listen, this is this got to do with my family's health. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to get rid of these cats or else you're gonna have to move. This, this, this is ungodly. You say you're a Christian, you have an Egyptian spirit of worshiping cats. I ain't gonna get into that, it's another spirit. All of a sudden, this, this spirit rose up in her and she was like, you dare. Like she changed on me. This sweet little old lady that was always timid and kind, using people, all of a sudden became very evil. See, that, that sociopathic spirit rose up. That anger rose up. You ever met people that seek drama? That's all they post on Facebook? They let everybody know what's going on in their life. Sociopath. And we're going to get into Facebook in a minute. But let us... To turn his cult of weak-minded followers into brainwashed groupies. Number seven, frequent and compulsive lying. We've all had to lie to some extent in order to function in society. However, most of us make a point of being honest, as it's a better way to live. Our consciences promote... Remember, it's coming from a non-Christian angle, okay? So, I mean, compulsive just... lying, we can skip that because of time, but y'all know they lie so much because they got no conscience. There's the conscience of them, it don't bother them. They can be in your face and be like, I'm not cheating on you, really. I've never done such a thing and like they still got the condom in their pocket. And it like you just like just tell me. You know how many marriages my wife and I in the ten years of you know what I'm saying? Just just let me know, that's all I wanna know. And you cheated on me, just no honey, I'm not cheating. I would never do such a thing. And with a straight face. Yeah. 
even conjure up some tears like, how could you accuse me? Accuse me. I go to work. I spend the last money. Uh, and, and you'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. I just, it's been hard on me lately. He's just yeah. like, got her. Yeah. Got him. Reverse psychology. Reverse. It's a narcissistic trait. Now again, it's not right for you to start thinking of your husband and your wife right now. Think of yourself. Okay? Don't do that. No, I gotta say that. I don't mean, wanna get no emails. <laughs> Minister Apostle Works. I kicked my man to the curb. <laughs> Girl! Did you check yourself first? Check you out. You know what I'm saying? Maybe for wreaking havoc, maybe don't earn it sham caught in a prison cell really struggle to wrap their heads around the idea that one in 25 people are sociopathic and do not feel guilt. One in 25. Now I know it's less than that. Really it's one in 10. Probably less than that. Listen. Those with consciences find this difficult to comprehend. Likewise, the sociopath finds the inner emotional worlds of neurotypicals oh. to be baffling. Okay, so this, one is, this one is no guilt or sense of responsibility. Okay. That's huh? That's yeah, he's a sociopath. Yeah, he Cannot does. feel pain unless he or she makes a conscious effort to do so, and this doesn't happen too often. The guiltlessness is accompanied by a lack of shame and zero sense of responsibility, and it's one of the prime. I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Like a sociopath don't really feel pain for others, like. But you got to remember some. It's not for us to look at sociopath as enemies, because I might have to kick some of y'all out. We all have been infected some way, somehow, with either we have a lot of seeds and there's a lot of it growing in us, or some of us have scattered seeds growing in us. Mm -hmm. But either way, don't look at no one else. Look at yourself. That's the only way you can be delivered right now. Because that's what a soul, that's what the spirit will do. That's what it'll do. You looking around like, not that, that brother right girl. See that brother over there? So, so bad. <laughs> I dropped my Bible. And I, I can feel his eyes on my boot. Sociopath. When you do that, the devil is laughing because you're going to look at everyone else except what? Yourself. yourself. Mm -hmm. You start with yourself. And then you can approach others to pray for them. Right? But this one right here, I remember at a service one time, this preacher, man, he hit the Oscar. He was. This preacher knew my wife and I's how, what we stood for boldness, holiness, so. His preaching switched up when we showed up. I mean that. I'm not saying like we're God or something. It's just some people switch. I, I tell people, you better be real with us. Because people know, I, my wife and I, we've been baptized in the Holy Ghost fire. I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. So, of course, if I show up, there's going to be a certain light switch up. You're going to be like, okay, I got to pray. Hallelujah, brother. We're praying to the Lord. Ooh, hallelujah. But never look at a man. Higher than you with God. If you're going to do something demonic right before he walk in your door and then he show up and you're just like, oh, praise the Lord, no, we're fine, everything's good, and you were just fist fighting, then you are, you got it backwards. You understand? You are to honor men of God and women of God and fear God. You see the difference? Right? So he switched up. And he was like, I'm tired. I'm tired of people not wanting to serve the Lord. The way they're supposed to. It hurts me. And you know another thing? What was he doing? He was forcing that the real feeling that we be having when we in our closet praying for real, like God, what is wrong with people? He had to force it out of him, like, uh, and let everybody know he was crying. Just eyes weren't even wet. <laughs> Just, yeah. I'm just tired, y'all. <gasps> Sociopathic. Watch this. Primary reasons why most sociopaths seem extremely immature. They seem frozen in adolescence and they lack the emotional tools to learn from experience. They may claim to want to be able to do better in the future and be very believable when they do so. However, they just can't learn. Their impulsiveness and desire to win at the game of life always leads them to repeat the same mistakes. A sociopath will follow the same patterns in a way that is truly perplexing. Anyone else would learn from experience. Celebrity example, John Gacy seems like a stand-up guy. So they, 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 it's like an immaturity state. They can't get out of it. 
unless they get delivered, amen? amen. They, they, they're irresponsible, they can't do things right, they start something and don't finish it, it's sociopath spirit. And if you if you got that in you, it's gonna come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Five, shallow emotions. By now you're getting the general idea. These people look like you or I, but aren't the same inside. They look at people and they're the reason why so many men and women are scarred from toxic relationships. Sociopaths do shocking things in their horrible acts, from leading double lives to sabotaging others in the workplace, may be readily apparent or may not be discovered for years. Or many so you hear that sabotaging. Mm -hmm. When you come at a sociopath, they're, they're, re they're, they're instantly going to react to you and try to sabotage you. That's, that's what they do. You know what I'm saying? Let's say you got a church member who's a sociopath and you rebuke them for their evil. Now, you don't cast them out, you don't condemn them, but you expose them. A sociopath, as long as they know you don't see them, they're cool with you. But the minute you go, I see you, <laughs> you're really not who you acting like. When they know it's no longer that, then they switch and they're instantaneously your enemy. That's how you spot a sociopath. How you go from loving someone to the point where you big them up to everybody. But the minute they show you your wrongs, all of a sudden now he's a false prophet. He's leading everybody to hell. You unfriended them. You, turn, you try to turn your family against that ministry. What is it? It's a sociopath. The first thing they do when you expose them is retaliate. That's a sociopath. Sociopaths probably would like to feel what the rest of us feel. Instead of knowing that they are on the outside looking in, most are quite happy to be sociopaths. For this reason, you shouldn't pity them. Celebrity example. You hear what he said? And, and he ain't even a Christian, but he right. You should not pity them. That's why, that's why I try to tell you, if you got a sociopath in your life, you need to tell them how it is. Or you're enabling them with the, the mind of what? Lucifer. You can't be friends with a sociopath or a narcissist. It will get to you. And you will become like unto them. Watch this. Even deceitful as any other sociopath, Diane Downs planned craftily but missed things in her haste to complete her mission. She was convicted and her only daughter. This woman killed all her children just to be with her new boyfriend. She had no emotion, no concern, no nothing for her own children. Her. Number four, empathy free. Empathy is feeling someone's pain. It's really simple for the empathetic to define. For example, when we heard about the horrible terrorist attack by terrorists on the Vatican nightclub or while the rock band Eagles of Death Matter were on stage, we empathetic beings banded together and felt the pain of the victims. Since sociopaths rarely put themselves into anyone's shoes, they don't experience this sense of humanity and what... No empathy. No... No feel, no, no, you can't, they can't feel the pain of others. This is giving them things under false pretenses. They don't show that sociopaths are able to turn empathy on and off. It's mostly in the off setting. Consider everyday con artists who are all too happy to trick others into giving them things under false pretenses. They don't emotionally understand how other people feel. That's why, like, people that were addicted to things, another thing that happened is addiction it's really, the devil loves addiction in, in people's lives because it always spawns a sociopathic spirit because you gotta manipulate to get that hit. Mm -hmm. Whether it's crack, whether it's an alcohol drink, whether it's pills, you gotta, you gotta manipulate the system, you gotta manipulate people, you gotta do what you gotta do to get what you need. Mm -hmm. So you learn to pick up a characteristic of a sociopath, mm -hmm. ultimately being infected with that spirit, amen? Not, no, no, don't say amen. I, I didn't mean that. Yeah, well, right. Due to them being... I'm not, to, not to be right Yeah, now, yeah I meant to say it the other way. meant to not have that. Yo, there was one pastor, We, uh, my wife and I heard, he, was, he had such a great message, but he would say amen to the wrong things. Like, and I caught it, I was like, yo, that's witchcraft. He's like, y'all women are depressed, amen? Like, amen! He was like, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You keep falling, you keep stumbling, amen? Amen! I'm like, what y'all saying amen to that for? Be free. Therefore, they are able to make false well, promises to others who are happen, amen. And yeah, exactly. Feeling the pain of those that they deceive. Number three, trivial sex life. The idea of sex and sociopathy is an interesting one. If you are dating, one thing to watch out for is someone who stares at the opposite sex a lot while you're out and about. If a person seems to be on the prowl, even when with a partner, that is narcissistic behavior. Where there's smoke, there is typically fire. 
Sociopaths stare. It's called the predator stare, and so that was inappropriate eye contact. Sociopaths don't have deep emotions, so they use sex in order to kill boredom. This lack of depth, coupled with higher than average levels of testosterone, means that sociopaths are often hopelessly addicted to sex. Since these types typically want higher and higher levels of sensation, they may become sexual deviants. This means cheating, using prostitutes, sleeping with people who are under the age of consent, sex tourism, and so on. Most sociopaths... Not for you, little one. Blessings, okay? Deuces. Love you. Bye-bye. Are promiscuous. In fact, promiscuity is one of the factors that psychiatrists look for when diagnosing this condition. Number two, conduct problems prior to age 15. Now you heard that, right? This also, if, if there's a strong addiction to masturbation and porn, it's a sign of sociopathy and narcissism. It's the mind of Lucifer. Okay? So, again, guys, you should be thankful for a word like this. Sociopathy starts young. It manifests in one way or another before the age of 15. Have I told you about the seeds that are planted at a young age? Mm -hmm. By nature, you don't just grow and have a certain mind like that. It has to be molded Some on Some young sociopaths hurt animals and don't understand why it's wrong until they are told. Others are violent with people. Bull will be rule breakers and most will experiment with alcohol and drugs as well as sexual content. To be honest, how many of that was us? I think all of us was rule breakers and didn't care and sociopathic seeds planted at a young age. Acts long before their non-sociopath peers. It's rare to find an adult sociopath who wasn't a problem teen in some respects. Number one, sadism and mind games. People with empathy right don't usually enjoy hurting others. A sociopath does enjoy it. Even those who he or she legitimately enjoys spending time with will be subject to sadism and mind games. If you know someone who seems to enjoy hurting you... I don't, I don't know why he had to put that, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to exit it out right now. Because he's a non-Christian, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the mind games, the head games, you know what I mean? In relationships, a man or a woman will deliberately do things to mess with you. Like, they'll deliberately do things. Like, leaves something that you know ain't your husband's or your wife's somewhere on purpose just to make their mind warped. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. No. No. What are you talking about? I went to my mom's. From mom's, I went to work. Why didn't you answer your phone? What, what? I, the phone died. It's a game. You understand? It's sociopathic. Too many games are being played. You understand? Don't play them! Don't give in to them! If a man or a woman you married to don't want to answer their phone, Oh well, whatever. God sees what you're doing. You're either gonna go with me, or you're going to hell. Cause I'm going to heaven, honey. Being real. Sociopaths are on the job. People will play games with you on the job. Your family members will play games with you. You got that one sister that calls you out the blue. That word out the blue is is a and a, and is a deep term too. It ain't. It doesn't mean it behind it. You notice they have that energy with them, and you get off the phone like aggravated and mad. Sociopath. They called to throw it on you. Play head games with you. Not respond to text messages or something. Or, or, or make empty promises on purpose to piss you to get you mad. You understand? So we gotta get we got a lot of scriptures to run through. But what I what I need <coughs> is is um this one right here. It, it's we're gonna only play like a minute or two of it. Just check it out. The downside is that social media sites are also populated by the self-absorbed, what psychologists call narcissists. Since social media sites can be used as one big mirror, narcissists flock to them. They delight in exhibiting themselves. No detail of their lives is deemed unimportant, especially to you. Posting the latest pictures of themselves in bikinis and on vacations, keeping everyone current on what they're doing like we care, and generally sharing every detail about their lives, large or small, keeps the self-absorbed coming back to the internet for more. In fact, Facebook is a narcissist's dream come true since it provides an endless arena of adoration 24 hours a day. 
even with international syndication. Now, since self-absorbed people can be very bad for normal people, it's important that you learn how to spot them on Facebook and any other site so you can avoid them. Here are the top clues. Adoration of the self. Narcissistic Facebook users like to talk about themselves and absolutely nothing else. Not in a normal Facebook profile kind of way, though. They go on and on and on about anything and everything, from who their favorite celebrity is to what they ate for breakfast. They consider themselves fascinating and are convinced that everyone would really want to read about every detail of their lives. There is nothing their audience doesn't want to hear. Control over self-presentation. The self-absorbed like Facebook because they can control exactly how they're presented to the world. Don't look great in that picture? Untag it. Don't want everybody knowing what you did last night when you were drunk? Delete the post on your wall. Facebook is a tool to create the perfect image of yourself and to control the spin. Too much skin. Have you ever seen a profile picture where the person is almost naked, either at the beach or holding up the camera in the bathroom mirror? Narcissists love to show you how good they look. Now, if they are showing off too much skin, run. Delete them. Constant updates. Narcissists update constantly about everything they do. No, we do, really do not need to know what you ate for lunch or that you look totally hot in that dress again. Overposting is a big sign of self glorification and a very narrow life. Shallow relationships. A recent study claims that you can only have around 150 relationships, from best friends to random acquaintances, before your brain literally overloads and can't take it anymore. When you see someone who has over 1,000 friends on Facebook, consider this a lie. Unless they're a celebrity or the president of the United States, they most likely do not know all of them. They haven't even met most of them. And those they do know are most likely very shallow relationships, like someone they met in a bar or at a party once. Narcissistic mirroring. The self-absorbed love to praise their fellow narcissist. Justifying and praising another narcissist's behavior is called narcissistic mirroring and only reinforces the trait. In fact, one of the favorite things self-absorbed people like to do is to bask in one another's glow. Check their post and wall conversation. Now pause. Do y'all know where the word narcissist came from? Huh? Yeah, he's, he's seen himself in, in a reflection and he just stared at himself and fell in love with himself. We, we're gonna chill. There's only one more video after this. But now let's get into the scriptures, amen? All right, we gotta get it. We gotta get it in. Now, um, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 2. We're gonna go to verse 10. Second Corinthians chapter two. And gee, I'm gonna just read it. Y'all get there, okay? Because we got a lot to get into, and we gotta probably wrap it up in a half. So, in Jesus' name. Chapter two, first yep, verse. just write these down. I'll read them. You write it down. Is that fair enough? You want the first verse? Then? Chapter ten and eleven. It says, to whom, be, to whom you forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything <coughs> of whom I forgave it, for your sake, forgive I it in the person of Christ. See that? In the person of Christ. In the person now. In the personality of Christ. You see that? Let's say he should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his what? Of his devices, right? His schemes, right? Go to Daniel chapter 8. I want to show you the mind. Daniel chapter 8. We're going 
going to start at verse. I will go to twenty four. Watch this. In Jesus' name. And the ten horns out of the kingdom are ten kings that shall rise, and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Now listen. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until times and the time and the dividing of time. You see that? So this, this man will think he's God or tell people he's the Almighty, right? Go to Ezekiel 28. You know, in, in, in essence, what was he trying to do to Eve in the garden? He wanted her to look at herself very highly. That's a sociopathic personality, a narcissistic character. To think of yourself what? Very grand. Can't you see it was in the very beginning of time? That's bananas. All right, is everybody there? Ezekiel 28. I'm not there, hold on. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to start at verse. Verse 15 going down. Y'all ready? Ready. Hold on. 11. Verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, Thou sealest the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So Lucifer, the devil, was filled with wisdom and perfect in what? Beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardis topaz and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, and workmanship of the tabrets and of the pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So Lucifer, he was actually in charge of praise and leading and worship. Did you know that? And did you know that he was made so beautiful that he would, he would literally light up like a light bulb and shine over God to, to kind of say, all praise the Lord. He would light up. That's where you get the spotlights. Where do you think they got that idea from? It's biblical. Right? You can imagine how it started to get to his head. Right? Watch this. Where we at? What verse? 14. 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered. See, he covered the throne. Right? And Sardis, Topaz, and the diamond, and the barrel, and the onyx, and the jasper, and sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, the gold, the workmanship of the tabrets, and of the pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered. What did I just read? Say it twice. Just read it over. Okay, my fault. 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered and I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Where is this place? Thou was perfect in your ways from the day that you were created till iniquity was found in thee. Listen to this. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned, therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Listen to this. Your heart was lifted up because of beauty. Ah. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings and, and they may that they may behold thee. You have defiled the sanctuaries 
by the multitude of your iniquities. Now pause this. What was he lifted up by? His beauty. What do you see on Facebook? Beauty. Beauty. It's all about them. You heard about the woman. She and I don't believe she's a believer. What did she say? It's all about them. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Facebook, picture, 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 picture. They're lifted up of their own beauty. It's the mind of Lucifer. Wow. I hope y'all catch how deep this really is. <laughs> That's right, only on Sunday. It's not a it's not a life thing. It's not a every right? Go to Daniel chapter eight. Actually, wait. Go to Ezekiel thirteen first, because we in Ezekiel already. Ezekiel 13. Yeah, my apologies. Yep, chapter 13 going down. saying the Lord say the Lord says and the Lord had not sent them and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word having you not seen a vain vision and have you not spoken a lying divination whereas you say the Lord has said it albeit I have not spoken one thing about narcissists in the church is they want to be leaders they want to they want to either be the praise and worship or they want to, you know, they try to work their way up to do stuff, but it's not to give glory to God. People that proclaim to be prophets, but they're not prophets of the Lord. They say it, but God didn't say it. You understand? Now, when you study the, 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 the personality of the Antichrist, what does the Bible say about the Antichrist? Say he shall lift himself up, right? So I started to think about characters in the Bible and see if how far back did the mind of Lucifer in fact people throughout, yeah. So the devil like the antichrist like the devil in the flesh was like Yeah. The devil inhabits him at one point. First person in the Bible, we're gonna go through him quick, you do your own study on him. Is that fair enough? Cain mm -hmm. and, and my son Elijah helped me with this last night. I was meditating. He was like, What about this one, Daddy? What about this one? He gave me most of these is his, so y'all make sure you give him a high five. First one is Cain. What did Cain warn, or what did God warn Cain about? Why did Cain kill his brother? He's a sociopath. He had no emotion. He killed his brother and was like, am I my, my brother's keeper? Well, God asked him, where your brother at? His brother was dead. He was like, okay, I'm sorry, I killed him. He was like, well, I'm supposed to look after him. You find him. Sociopath. Guess what the name Cain means? Acquired or to obtain. A sociopath always wants. <laughs> Never wants to what? Give. Huh? Next one. Adonijah was the brother of King Solomon. This was the man who tried to force his way into the kingdom. He tried, to he tried to get people to anoint him king. He tried to force his way into a seated position. Guess what Adonijah means in Hebrew? The Lord is my God. These, these narcissists or sociopaths in the church will be the ones that pray the loudest sometimes. Be the ones that shout the, the loudest amens. Amen, brother. The Lord is my God. But you're a sociopath. You see the play on words? Hey, 
Naaman in the book of Esther was a man who had no compassion. Everywhere this man went, he wanted everybody to what? But it was a man named Mordecai. He was like, I ain't bound to that narcissistic, sociopathic clown. In the movie First Sunday, there's a dude named Mordecai. I don't know if you've seen that with Tracy Morgan High School. Nah, I didn't see that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So, Haman tricked the king into killing off all the Jews. It backfired in his face, thank God. Mm -hmm. Sociopath. They will do whatever they gotta do to knock you out. And have, they'll eat, they'll eat lunch like it never happened. You understand? Mm -hmm. You can see the pattern of the mind of Lucifer. Go to, go to uh, uh, third, the third letter of John. Somebody read verse 9 to me real quick. This guy's name was Diotrephes. Diotrephes. Somebody read that real quick. We gotta be quick. I want you to read this one personally. What's it say? The third letter of John, verse 9. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. I'm sorry, brother. Third letter of John? Verse 9. See, this one don't have. Wait, I, verse I wrote, them, I wrote them to the mm -hmm. church, but theotrophy, no, who loveth, who loveth to have premises. Y'all read, y'all hear this. Among them, receive us not. Y'all heard that? Thank you, brother. Diatrophies love to have the preeminence. What does it mean to have the preeminence? He wanted to be the leader, the ruler. Look at what he did, just like a typical sociopath. The mind of Lucifer. Whereof if I come, I will remember his deeds which he does, prating against us with malicious words. And not content wherewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbidding them that they would, and casting them out of the church. You see that? When you, when you come at a narcissist or a sociopath, what's they do? They turn others against you and give prating words against you. Liars. Huh? What about Jezebel and Ahab? This is in 1 Kings. Jezebel and Ahab. Sociopath. They killed a man just for his vineyard, sister. Just for his garden, they had a man killed. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What about that, that guy, that Jim Jones guy, that was supposed to be a pastor? Oh, yeah. Sociopath. Oh, yeah. That's right. The list goes on. We, we talking biblical, but you're right. You had something to say? Mm -hmm. So, thank you. So, Jezebel and Ahab, another sociopath, only wanted for themselves. Mm -hmm. She was a liar. She lied about the man to have him killed. <laughs> All she wanted was what she wanted. That was it. She didn't care who she killed. Same thing with her husband. It's a sociopath. It's the mind of Lucifer. Lucifer. Simon the Sorcerer in the book of Acts, chapter 8. Y'all read that on your own time. Simon the Sorcerer, supposing to be someone great, the Bible says. He was lifted up as a warlock until the power of God came around. Huh? Sociopath. He wanted all the attention. Come on, y'all. I know this is going to be a rough one. Samson. He, he learned his lesson. Yes, he did. He was a sociopath. He was well, more like a narcissist. Samson was in love with himself. He was warned not to be with all the women. Yep. What is a sociopath? What was one of the characteristics? I wrote them all down. He was um, a trivial sex life, always looking for more women yep. or more men, never satisfied. Eating, eating, eating. He, until what happened? He, 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 he met his match. Because Delilah was a queen sociopath. She had no emotion watching him go blind. When she cut his hair, blind the sucker. Where my money at? It was all about her. Sound familiar? Yeah. Sound like society? Yes. <coughs> But Samson went blind to see who he was and repented. Amen. 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 Do you know even King David got infected at one point when he killed Uriah to take his wife? Yep. Yes. 
Come on now. Come on now. We preaching up in here. Judas Iscariot. Remember when Judas made the comment about the poor? He said, why wasn't this soul and money given to the poor? But what did the word say about him? It said he didn't care about the poor. He was saying it because he, he would help himself to the money. He was a sociopath. And a sociopath will turn against Christ. He was in love with himself the whole time. He had no emotion. So it didn't even bother him. These are people that come into the congregation. You can preach a word so powerful. You can have tears, literally. And they'll go home and sin like it never happened. The word, and they were entertained because the sociopath, they, do you know the so, a Christian sociopath, if there's a thing called that, they love uh, pastors and, and, and men of God that preach a really good word with deep knowledge and revelation because they, they, they're getting entertained. They're like, oh, wow, did you hear what he said? The bathroom that is hidden in Daniel chapter 5, verse 3. I didn't know that. Ooh. You're getting a rise, but you're not being touched. That's a Lucifer mind. Pharisees. What do you think the Pharisees were? They were numb. They lifted themselves up above everybody. Didn't care who they hurt. Ah, there's so many examples. I'll give you one before we move on. Matthew 23, real quick. And I, I kind of like how we didn't go to him because I go to some of the people because I want you to study yourself. Amen? Amen. Sometimes you don't you need to look yourself. Because you might see something I didn't see. Matthew 23. Real quick. I'm going to just read this real quick. Verse 28. Jesus said, Even so you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. That is the mind of Lucifer. On the outside he was a beautiful angel, but on the inside he was dark. You see? Sociopaths usually go undetected in relationships. They go undetected at the job. They go undetected in your family you grew up with. Because you don't catch on because you're caught under the spell. But it's getting broken tonight. Today. But we got to go one step deeper though. Mm. Man. Somebody read 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, real quick. Just real quick. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6. We got one quick little video we got to get into. Out of every 25... I'm going to show y'all something that's going to make y'all be like, what? 1 Timothy. Timothy, yep, chapter 3, verse 6. Amen. Oh, she quit. Go ahead, sis. Not a novice lusting what's up with pride, we fall into from the nation of the devil. You see that? What's a novice? Hmm? What does it mean to fall into condemnation with the devil? Fall into the same judgment. How could two walk together unless they agree? Right? So what I want to show you, because we, we ain't even talked about the mind of Christ, right? We read in the beginning, Philippians, it said, have the same mind that was in who? In Christ. Christ in you. you, right? So if the mind of Christ can be in somebody, it's fair to say that the mind of Lucifer can be in somebody. Amen. Ain't that fair to say? Yes, I want you to see something. I'm going to see if you catch it. People, one of them is a sociopath and capable of feeling empathy. So, who's a psycho in your life? <laughs> Hey everyone, Lacey Green here for D News. Sociopathy is a type of mental disorder where a person literally does not have that pull in their heart, in their brain, that prompts them to care about others. Sociopaths don't feel compassion and they don't feel fear. Dr. Martha Scout of Harvard Medical School describes sociopaths as people who can run free in the world doing and saying whatever they want to without feeling any remorse for it. For the sociopath, people are tools to achieve whatever they want. They're painfully self-interested and they can imitate empathy and will express compassion if it benefits them. But inside yeah. they're emotionally dulled and so 
it may sometimes come off a bit callous. A few years ago, I met someone who had been formally diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, which is an umbrella term that includes sociopathy. And when I met him, I was drawn to him for our shared interest and our shared sense of humor, but I always felt like there was something a little off. Although the circumstances were set for us to be pals, years went by and things never stopped feeling sort of cold and Weird. Later in our friendship, he told me about his diagnosis, and I was fascinated. So I started reading out. Now I know this is not a Christian aspect. It's not a. It's, it's more than a diagnosic. It's a demon. Mm -hmm. You understand? The Bible says in the scriptures, the enemies that were once in your mind, demons can dwell in the mind and in the soul. You understand? Follow this. Including Dr. Stout's book, The Sociopath Next Door. There's been a lot of research conducted on this condition, sociopathy. We know now that a sociopath's brain is actually neurologically different than the average person. There have been several fMRI studies where patients are shown horrific imagery, bloody stabbings, shootings, and in most people, the amygdala lights up the part of the brain that's responsible for fear and concern for others. But in sociopathic patients, the amygdala stays dark. Pause. Whoa. When God led me to that, I was like, okay, Lord, this is leading up to a deliverance prayer. Y'all ready? Amen. Um, go to Matthew. Go to Luke 11. Luke 11, verse 34. We got to be quick, y'all. Ready? I'm, I'm, you write it down, I'm going to read it. Pay attention, make sure you don't miss this. In Jesus' name, the light of the body is the eye. What does the eye mean? The mind. Listen. Therefore, when your eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But if your eye be evil, your whole body is what? Full of what? Full of darkness. Go to Ephesians 4.18. Watch this. You got to give her props, though. She is an excellent walker. She don't knock the camera. She don't knock nothing. That's how you know it's a spirit sometimes in children. And certain kids, all of just knock, knock. She but she, every cheat can never knock that. Never. Ephesians what? 4.18. We're going to start at 17, though. Watch what it says. You ready? This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you henceforth walk not also as Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding what? Darkened. Darkened. Be alienated of the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their what? You starting to see a pattern? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, real quick. What was that Ephesians that you read again? I'm sorry. That's Ephesians 4, 18, oh, 17 and 18. 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Listen to what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. It says, In whom, verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world, who's that? Lucifer. So that means what mind do they have? Mind. The mind of Lucifer. Whom the God of this world had what? Blinded, Blinded the minds. That means darkened their mind in the, in the original text, right? Mm -hmm. Which believe not. Lest the what? The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine to them. So when they see horrific things and things that's supposed to move them, their mind is what? Darkened. Darkened. They don't feel because the mind of Lucifer is a sociopathic, narcissistic mind. So they can't feel no pain. They got no remorse. They pretend to repent when they pray with you. Lord, I repent. You got to leave. Every time they sin, you do a sin. Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had sex again with my next door neighbor, God. Lord, forgive me. That same night back over her house because they have the mind of Lucifer so you got to strike at the root because what's happening right here's their mind created in the image of God right but when the mind of the, the devil has merged with them 
through all the things they've seen on TV, all the music they listen to, all the things they were taught. And practicing that lifestyle, they have merged with the mind of Lucifer. You understand? Therefore, you gotta strike the mind of Lucifer off of their mind so they can start to know to feel again. Do you know even when you remove the mind of Lucifer off of somebody, they still got to read. The Bible talks about the renewing of the what? The spirit of your mind. You have to be renewed so you can start fresh again. Lucifer was the teacher of our minds growing up. So when he gets struck off our minds, Christ now has to reteach us. Uh-uh, you're supposed to feel that person's pain. Uh-uh. Don't speak about yourself highly. Speak about enough. Uh-uh. Care for the homeless. Uh-uh. Love your wife. Uh-uh. Honor your husband. Uh-uh. Love your children. Uh-uh. Respect the man of God. He has to read to you. <laughs> Go to Romans 1. Somebody read verse 21. Who gets there quick gets to eat it. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't like this. Romans 1.21. What does it say? Who's going to get there? 121. Oh, so <coughs> Go ahead, sis. Whoever gets it, eat it up. Because of the name you got, they glorify the God of God. You know an angel, but you can't make the imagination and the foolish part of the darkness. You see that? The darkness of Lucifer. The darkness of a sociopathic mind. It's a sociopath to hell. <clears throat> Go to Isaiah chapter 46. I got good news for you. Isaiah 46. Oh. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 46. Yep, Isaiah 46. Verse. Oh, let me let me get it. Let me get it. come back to that. But my point is this. What did it say in the book of Acts that would be brought to us? A light unto the Gentiles, right? Mm -hmm. What is Jesus called? The light of the world. The light of the world. Right? Mm -hmm. So this means that I want, I want some of us to start to talk about what is the mind of Christ. Give me some examples of the mind of Christ. Humility. Humility. Forgiveness. What did Philippians say? Go to chapter 2. We'll go back to um, Isaiah. Just hold on. Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to read it. Verse 6 going down. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no what? Reputation. And took upon him the form of a what? Man. A servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the, unto death, even the death of a cross. You see that? Denying yourself. How many times did Christ say, deny yourself, pick up your cross, and what? Follow after me. This is the healing from being delivered from the mind of Lucifer. Uh -huh. Lucifer wants it all about you. Jesus wants you to deny everything about you. Lucifer wants you to take. Jesus wants you to give. You see how good it is? There's a complete opposite battle going on. And I'm telling you right now, the same way the Bible talk about the mind being darkened, 
And how many times we hear in the gospel to talk about the mind of Christ? Romans 12, real quick. We got to get ready to pray. I'll read it, verse 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your what? My mind. mind. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This means that if our mind can be transformed into good, that means people's mind can also be transformed into bad, into darkness. And at the basis of it, it's the Lucifer mind on people. When This is why Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. What is one of the characteristics of a narcissist? A constant liar, right? A child picks up their father's what? Traits. Like father, like son. So if their daddy is a sociopath and a narcissist in love with himself, what are they going to be like? He's going to be a not, like his father, love himself. You see that? Look at these right now. We're going to go through them. And I have verses for every one, but because of the time, we're not going to be able to get through them all. Number one was charm, right? All in Proverbs to talk about what? Charm. charm and vain beauty and all of this stuff, right? Number two was egoism and grandiosity. A high sensation seeker where drama and anger are their greatest emotions. You know those people that fight with you and you're like, damn, this ain't that serious. You ain't got to be this angry with me. Yes. Sociopath spirit. When they blow up and you be like, listen, and they're like, it's not little. Nah, it's all right. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll make sure I take the trash out. Mom. There was no need to fight and threaten to fire me over a mistake. That's because that they can't feel love. So they gotta they gotta grab whatever emotion they can feel so they can feel something. These are people that want to fight with you over stupid things. Stop fighting with them. The Bible says, argue and fight not with a fool unless you what? Become. Catch a snare and be like unto them. Remember the sermon we gave, dark circles? Mm -hmm. Right? You don't want to become a sociopath or a narcissist. Um, compulsive liars over and over and over again. Do I really got to go to scriptures where God hates lying? Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? No guilt, no emotions for others. Look at the compassion that Christ had for people. Right? And the news is doing it on purpose. Why do you think everything is desensitized now? When a, when a, when a brother gets shot in the hood by a cop or whatever the case be, they don't leave nothing out. Why? They want you what? Desensitized. Look at the cartoons, look at everything now. It, it was terrible when we were kids. Do you know what this generation is going through? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord. Shallow emotions. Empathy free. Can't feel nobody's pain. You could pretend to try to, but in your heart you're like, I really don't care. I'm still going to watch my show tonight. I'll be it. All right, okay, so, you know, you have your family die in the car wreck, sir. Lord, have mercy on you. I've got to go. No compassion. Trivial sex life. Masturbating all the time. Always seeking. Eyes always wandering. You better know. You might not be a full narcissist or a full sociopath, but these are signs of a sociopath. It's a sign that there's a war in your mind where you got a little bit of the mind of Christ, but you got the mind of Lucifer in there too. Bad, when you was a child, you was always going through trouble. That one everybody knows. Head games. Playing head games. So these are a common list. There's more, but these are a common list. So what we got to do, go to Ephesians 5. We're going to wrap it up with a prayer. Let's go. Ephesians 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Verse 7 going down. Be, let no man deceive you with vain words, because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not you therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes darkness. See that? For now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You see that? You were supposed to be at one point a narcissist or a sociopath or a Luciferian child. 
But God, the Bible says he translated us from the powers of darkness into the kingdom of what? His dear son. You see that? You see that? We're going to wrap it up with this one. 2 Timothy chapter 3, real quick. Let's go. I'm going to prove to you that Facebook, Twitter, social media is a breeding ground creating mass amounts of sociopaths and narcissists. Y'all ready? I'm going to see if this looks familiar. Listen to what it says, chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days terrible times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own self. Wow. We can stop right there. Women shall be lovers of their own self. Right? Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heavy, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power. Tell me that don't sound like a sociopath. Sociopath. Everything on there. And this is the society we're living in. Now, I got so many other scriptures and so many other things to go into, but I'm going to keep it real with you. We don't have time. Right? And we need to pray. Come on. Come on. We need to pray. This is our prayer. Is that if there's any mind of Lucifer in us, any character of Lucifer still in us, if there's any sociopathic in us, and all y'all listening by way of internet. <coughs> I'm telling you, don't let the devil deceive you. Start with yourself. I don't care if you don't believe you got this. You better do this prayer. It's time to say, Lord, even if I don't see it, take it out of my soul. Take it out of my mind. You heard what the woman said? Even when the scientists did a, a, a when they read inside of the mind, it was darkness. Good night. Say this when you say, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Forgive me for my sins. Lord, I need your help right now. This word is heavy. Lord, I want your mind. Lord, I want your mind. But Lord, if there's any seeds that the devil planted in me that are altering my character in my mind. If I have any part of the mind of Lucifer, if I am a narcissist in any way, if I'm a sociopath in any way, Lord, take it out of me. Take it out of me. I rebuke the mind of Lucifer. Get off of my mind. Get out of my conscience. Get out of my thoughts. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of the stronghold of the mind of Lucifer, of sociopath, and narcissism, and casting every thought down, and imagination that tries to exalt, that tries to exalt against God. I bind you, you narcissist spirit, you narcissist personality, you sociopathic personality. I bind the personality of Lucifer. I command you to come out of my soul. Come out of my mind. I want the mind of Christ to love others more than my own life. To care for others. To want the will of God. To be selfless. Not selfish. I rebuke a lying tongue. I rebuke charm. I rebuke egoism and grandiosity. Lord, if there's any part of me that tries to be the center of attention, tries to get people to look over here all the time, whether it's on social media or when I leave my house, Lord, get that off of me. Break the curse of the narcissist loving myself. Lord, help me to love But to love you, I rebuke no emotions and no guilt. Give me your emotions, Lord, to feel sorry when I do wrong, to really repent. I rebuke shallow emotions. I rebuke the empathy-free spirit. I rebuke the trivial sex spirit. Lust, addicted to a rush. I want to be addicted to Christ. I rebuke bad conduct, head games, 
I command you, Lucifer, you and your personality, the seeds you planted in me from when I was born to now, I break the seeds, I disempower them, I stop the growth, I rip the plants out by the root, I will not go to hell, I refuse to learn about Christ and stay on the sociopath to hell. I'm getting off it today. Lord, help me to fast to fight this spirit where I play games with people. I lie to people. I use people. I walk around as if I'm awesome. Not giving you the glory. Puffed up in pride. Maybe I'm beautiful. Maybe I'm handsome. And I use my looks just like Lucifer. I reject that. Reprogram me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to be the complete opposite of Lucifer. To be the complete opposite of narcissists and sociopaths. And to be Christ-like, selfless. Say so right now, put your hands on your mind right now. Y'all on YouTube and everybody with me, say, Lord, Lord fill my mind with your holy light. If there's any darkness that causes me to not care and to be numb, I cancel it. I rebuke it now with the light of Jesus Christ. Shine in me, oh God. Shine in my soul. Shine, Lord. May my eye be light. So my whole body is the light of Christ. I rebuke the dark eye off of my mind in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. 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 I reject Lucifer as my father. I embrace Jesus Christ as my father. God the Father. Jehovah. To the glory of his son. Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Ghost I declare right now this prayer to work in my life that Lord you will renew me retrain me and Lord protect me from being a victim of sociopaths narcissists and Luciferian children protect me God in the name of Jesus Christ put a shield around me that whenever a narcissist is around a sociopath a psychopath or a child of Lucifer I can spot him a mile away and I'm going to shine the light of Christ I'm making it in I'm off the sociopath to hell and I'm off the path of righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ Amen Cross and be